Good morning, my wonderful people. This is Friday, April 10th, and we are on Google Classroom. We have to do two things today. Actually, three. I misspoke. Three things. First is these questions right here on a podcast listening assignment. So from Chapter 3, we learned that um, Claudette was, well, becoming herself. She was uh, 15 years old. She got a really awesome new teacher called Mrs. Nesbitt, who is inspiring her to become a social activist. And um, she, we were also learning about Jeremiah Reeves, who was one of the, um, or who was a black man who was convicted of raping a white housewife and was being sentenced to death by um, a jury of all white people. So a group of all white people decided that this man should die, this black man should die, because he did something that they didn't really have that much evidence about, which is pretty sad. Um, and Claudette responded to that heavily. What we're going to learn today is why Claudette's story is not really known. We know Rosa Parks' story really well, but we don't know Claudette's. So why is that? Um, once again, I want you to have these questions open right here. And we're going to listen to this Claudette Colvin on NPR.mp3. All right, these are the questions. The first thing that I want you to do is write your email there. It would be, I'm just going to do jhurst26 at lift for life academy org, and then I'm going to play this audio and I can talk between the two all right so question one why did Claudette decide not to give her seat almost on the every bus? American child learns that on December 1st 1955 in Montgomery Alabama Rosa Parks refused to move to the back of the bus and <clears throat> give up her seat to a white person with this act, the Montgomery bus boycott began. Dr. Martin Luther King. We are not wrong in what we are doing. If we are wrong, the Constitution of the United States is wrong. If we are wrong, God Almighty is wrong. What? Um, so Dr. Martin Luther King said two interesting things right there. One that Claudette would absolutely 100% agree with that if we're wrong, if the people who are trying to integrate society are wrong, if they're trying to bring black and white people together into the same room and say that they are equal, if they're trying to integrate, then the Constitution is wrong. Um, Claudette said whenever she was being taken off the bus by police officers, it's my constitutional right. So he's saying that if we're wrong, that means that the Constitution is wrong, and they're going to have to change it. Um, the other thing is that if they're wrong, then God is wrong, because God also requires justice. But Claudette would definitely agree with that first point, that it is unconstitutional for them to be wrong, to want to integrate. What some people don't know is that Rosa Parks was not the first woman to refuse to give up her seat. Before her, a number of women refused. Most were taken off the bus and quietly fined. The first woman to really challenge the Montgomery bus segregation law was a 15-year-old teenager named Claudette Colvin. Now, there's a book about her. Okay, so we just mentioned her age and why she, not why she wasn't as famous as Rosa Parks, but that she was not. So the author of this just stated that Rosa Parks is more famous than Claudette Colvin. We also learned that she was only 15 whenever she decided to give up her seat. That was probably the youngest that anybody had ever been whenever they decided to do that. Pretty wild stuff. And Pierre's Margot Adler reports. Claudette Colvin is alive and living in the Bronx. After 30 years of working in a nursing home, at 69, she is retired, but she remembers the day on March 2nd, 1955, when she refused to get up from her seat as clear as if it was yesterday. After the bus driver ordered her to get up and she refused, saying she'd paid her fare and it was her constitutional right, two police officers put her in handcuffs and arrested her. All I do remember is that I... So this is Claudette speaking right now, and I already wrote one answer. Why did Claudette not decide or decide not to give up her seat on the bus. So the narrator said in that segment, um, Claudette decided to not give up her seat because it was her constitutional right. So I'm gonna fix that spelling right there. It was her constitutional right, meaning according to the laws of the federal government, 
it was her right to be seated and have a seat wherever she wanted to, especially if she'd already paid, which she agrees to. Now this is Claudette speaking, okay? She's giving a direct interview um, from New York City about why she decided to not give up her seat. I wasn't gonna walk off the bus. Well, uh, what were you thinking at that uh, moment? What were you thinking at oh, that moment? Oh, Lord, have mercy. Oh, Lord, have mercy. It was Negro History Month. It was Negro no, History Month. You know, that whole month, you know, they had been studying about black leaders like Harriet Tubman, the runaway slave who led more than 70 slaves to freedom through the network of safe houses, the runaway slave who led more than 70 slaves to freedom through the network of safe houses, known as the Underground Railroad. Known as the and Sojourner Truth, a former slave who became an abolitionist and women's rights activist. They'd also been talking about the injustices they experienced daily, like not being able to eat at a lunch counter. They'd also been talking about the injustices they experienced daily, like not being able to eat at a lunch counter. Clothes, you, you know, you had to take a brown paper bag, brown paper bag, and draw the diagram of your food on it, the brown paper bag, and take it to the store. So all of that, can you imagine all of that in my mind? It's like we have a with this too full. The black know, history, the that you know, the oppression that we went through. So I tell everybody, so you know why I tell everybody, I you know why I said, felt? I said, felt like so I said, it felt like so John and Truth was on one side pushing it down, and Harriet Tubman was on the other side of it. So um, she says an interesting there, right? Or interesting thing right there that Sojourner Truth was pushing her down on one side, and Harriet Tubman was pushing her down on the other side. Now, she's talking about pushing her down as if she's. Um, being forced to stay seated on that bus. Okay, so whenever the police came, um, they started, well, basically harassing her and yelling at her to get up, and she just stay seated. Whenever the police finally picked her up, she just went limp. She didn't fight back or anything. So um, whenever she says that Harriet Tubman was pushing her down on one side, that means metaphorically, not literally, it was pushing her down, and Sojourner Truth was on the other side, pushing her down so that she would stay in her seat. Okay. I couldn't get up. I as we sit in her Bronx apartment, as we sit in her Bronx also apartment, Holman also the moments remembers the moments the jail Just like a Western closed. movie, she said. Just like a Western when movie, she said. When it go click. Um, these are the people who were making a difference during this time. Um, it's not actually women who are making a difference at this time, but just women who made a difference. So Turner Truth and Harriet Tubman are definitely two of those people. Rosa Parks was in the same time. Sorry, I don't know what's going on with my sound quality, but let's fix this, okay? We're at 2.45 right now. I don't know what's going on. Let's try it again. Well, we already talked about that last one, so let's talk about that last one real quick. Um, read the sentences from the interview, then answer the questions that follow. Colvin, so I tell you, this is Colvin, Claudette Colvin speaking. So I tell everybody, so I tell everybody, say, you know how it felt? I said, it felt like Sojourner Truth was on one side pushing me down, and Harriet Tubman was on the other side pushing me down. I couldn't get up. What does Claudette mean when she says, it felt like Sojourner Truth was on one side pushing me down and Harriet Tubman was on the other side? Remember that they were doing that in her mind, not actually. So would it be that there were two women on the bus who were holding her down so she wasn't able to stand up? No, there weren't actually two women on the bus. They were in her head. She felt inspired by the work that Sojourner Truth and Harriet Tubman were doing to end segregation, so she refused to give up her seat because of them. Definitely one of them. She was asleep and dreaming about meeting Sojourner Truth and Harriet Tubman, so she didn't realize it when she was asked to stand. No, she knew exactly what she was doing. She did this for a reason. And then lastly, she knew that she would um, she knew that she would let down her good friends, Sojourner Truth and Harriet Tubman, if she stood and gave up her seat. They weren't good friends, they were role models. They were heroes to her. Okay, I'm going to have to reload this. I'm sorry. You can fast forward um, to this certain time. I'm not sure when it's going to be, but... Almost every American... Almost oh, every American... All of that is like in the head with this too full. Black history. 
the black you know, history. The oppression that you know, we the went oppression through. that we, we so went through. So I tell everybody, so you know what I, I tell everybody, I said, you know what I, I said, it felt like so I said, it felt like so John and Truth was on one side pushing it down, and Harriet Tubman was on the other side of the pushing it down. I couldn't get it. As we sit in her Bronx apartment, Colvin also remembers the moment the jail door closed. Just like a Western movie, she said. Just like a Western movie, she said. When it goes, and I knew I was. And I knew I was locked in and couldn't get out. And then I got scared. And then I got scared. Panic come on, you know, start crying. Then I started crying. Then I started saying the Lord's Prayer because I'm Baptist. 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 Because
um, this exit ticket, I do just want you to make, um, not make a copy of it, but just look at it. I do want you to submit whenever you're done. This is a copy of Zaz, and I'm really proud of this one. This is the one that we did in class together, and I hope that it comes up soon, and I'm sorry that it isn't. But it is going to ask, why didn't Claudette um, share her story? Why did she rarely tell her story? Okay. I'm going to try to empty out these tabs so that we can have... more information please finish the exit ticket use those sentence starters um, so the sentence starter would be Claudette rarely spoke um, about her situation or about her action because people didn't really want to hear about it at the time in New York City okay and here is Zaz. So it says, number one, write a CER explaining the following question. Why did Claudette rarely tell her story? Support your answer with evidence from the text. So sentence starters, Claudette rarely tells her story because Za goes down here and she shares that exactly. Claudette rarely tells her story because she moved to New York. Okay, so that's a good claim. She moved to New York. Now she has to explain using evidence in the interview. It says, in the interview, Claudette says, Everyone was talking about Malcolm X and Black Power. So they were doing that in New York whenever she moved there after um, she moved from uh, Montgomery. This evidence explains why Claudette rarely tells her story because no one at all wants to he hear about integration. Now that isn't quite true. They just didn't want to hear about it in New York. So if she mentioned she, they didn't want to hear about integration in New York because they were more focused on Malcolm X and Black Power, then that would tie the ideas closely together, and that's what we're looking for in reasoning. So take a word from your claim, take a word or two from your evidence, and then connect those two together. All right? Because it was about New York, it was about Malcolm X and Black Power, we want to include that in the reasoning. Okay? Thank you, everybody. Um, once again, you can just copy this down word for word if you need to, but I do want you to be thinking and you can use other evidence from the podcast as well. Thank you.